Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again. That's for art. Uh, look, I apologize for not reading to you. I know I sort of made a commitment to myself I'd read every single day while I was on vacation, but honestly, I was just so exhausted from the travel. I completely just forgot. I was exhausted. Anyways, I'm here. We are now. We've traveled to the French Quarter, and we are staying at the St. Marie Hotel on Toulouse Street. It's a bit cathartic for me because I was a quarter rat in my 20s. I lived in the French Quarter for six years. So it's interesting coming here after 30 years. I haven't been back for 34 years, I think it's been. Quite interesting. Ironic to look at the places where I uh, actually got married to my children's dad and learned how to bartend, learned how to wait tables. Interesting. Sort of gave me that stamp of... Uh, I don't know, independence or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, let me get to our book. I really do want to pursue this. Uh, we're reading Poison Power, uh, The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants, and I think we lost that case uh, because we've got them everywhere. And we are actually living in the calamity of what Dr. John Goffman promised would happen if we pursued this. So we are now on Chapter 10. It's called... What Citizens Can Do About Nuclear Electricity. Actually, that's not the title. It's What Can Citizens Do About Nuclear Electricity? It's a question. And we're on page 230, second paragraph. Nuclear electricity generation has developed under a set of, at best, questionable radiation standards. Standards that are, that are right now under sweeping review. Yet the licensing boards refuse to hear any challenge to a particular reactor that is based upon the invalidity and illegality of the radiation standards. The board accepts the standards as sacrosanct. 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 Sorry about that. The board accepts the standards as sacrosanct. It is up to the intervener to prove that the, proposed, that the proposed reactor will fail to meet the current standards. This is a patently ridiculous state of affairs. This does not mean citizens should avoid such hearings. Certainly the opposing statements made there, reported in local papers, help educate the community on the true facts about nuclear power generation. Consider the effect. 500 people appear at such a hearing, all of them opposed to an impending nuclear power plant. This fact is reported locally. The community at large and its officials come to an early understanding of what they are up against. When the hearings produce nothing constructive and plans for the power plant go forward if they are as if there had been no hearing. Within a democratic process, there are other avenues that can be effective. In the order of increasing effectiveness are A. The U.S. Congress B. The state legislatures C. Direct public referendum to achieve a moratorium on new above-ground nuclear power plants. I think we need to have a moratorium on all nuclear power plants. Many members of the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate are thoroughly informed on the true character of the atomic energy promotion. If they are incensed, they feel powerless to do anything constructive. Largely, the problem centers upon the stranglehold of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, the, excuse me, Largely, the problem centers upon the stranglehold the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy has on Congress. Suppose a bill were introduced into Congress calling for a moratorium on construction of new nuclear electricity plants. The parliamentarian would undoubtedly refer it to the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. There, the bill will languish forever. Imagine what the chances are that the super promotional Joint Committee on Atomic Energy would recommend to halt such a construction. The early retirement of Congressman Holyfield and Hosmer would be helpful. Moreover, 
would be action to keep all considerations of electric power generation, including nuclear power, from ever getting into the hands of this committee. This does not appear to be imminent. An alternative approach would be to block the annual appropriations bill for the Atomic Energy Commission in an effort to force a reasoned consideration of nuclear electricity generation. All in all, it is difficult to develop such optimism about constructive action at the congressional level, considering the archaic obstructionist features of the existing committee system. It wouldn't do any harm, however, for a citizen to discuss these expedients with his congressmen and senators. They might be willing to try some of the strategies outlined here. It is extremely important to educate the individual congressmen and senators concerning nuclear electricity generation and its hazards, not so much for what these men will accomplish in Washington, but for the influence they can have in their own states where constructive action is definitively possible. <coughs> I'm sorry. And some effective measures might be achieved in Congress itself, since the public is increasingly aware that politicians' lip service without action only aggravates an already alarming environmental crisis. The early retirement of such congressmen could change the complexion of the Congress enough to make progress towards a rational nuclear pol policy possible. But this would take time, possibly a few elections, and be too late to prevent much of the nuclear power plant proliferation currently being promoted. There are 51 nuclear power plants east of the Mississippi. No, actually, there are 50 nuclear power plant sites. There are more than 51 nuclear power plants because many of the sites have two or three nuclear reactors. So there's like 90, I think, there. The Fastest Way to the Moratorium, new subtitle. Individual state legislators are awakening to the concern of their constituencies over the nuclear electricity juggernaut, especially where plans call for nuclear electric stations that will leave almost no region of the state safe from the effects of an accident at one or another nuclear power plant. Pennsylvania's state legislature recently responded to citizen pressure by initiation of extensive hearings on nuclear electricity generation, almost wholly focused on environmental health and safety aspects of nuclear power. So I wonder if we had Three Mile Island uh, on purpose. Such hearings, in strike contrast with those conducted by the AEC, would serve the extremely important function of providing the state legislators and the public with balanced information and an open forum education on the less publicized aspects of nuclear electricity generation, such as health and safety. Until recently, the major source of information was the AEC's, quote, Gospel of the Peaceful Atom. Unquote. However, it appears that the most likely action of the state legislature will be to initiate interminable studies of the problem. Still, elected officials, when provided with full and honest information on both sides of the question, can aid materially in educating citizens of their own constituency. To restore rationality to the nuclear electricity generation scene, the most likely avenue to success is a moratorium on new nuclear power plants above ground for some period to five to seven years. I would say this guy was quite generous, man. And the fastest way to achieve this is to get direct public vote by initiation or referendum on the ballot forbidding planning constructing or licensing of such plans during the moratorium period. The citizens of Eugene, Oregon were able to put a referendum on the ballot by citizen petition which won a moratorium on construction of a nuclear power plant that had already been approved. 
The action in Eugene proves that it is possible to educate the public about the dark side of nuclear electricity generation in the face of a mountain of well-financed pro-nuclear propaganda. So this, I'm just going to make a comment on this because I live in Eugene, Oregon. These very same activists, many of them still live in Eugene. And I've talked to them about Fukushima. They know about it. And they, you know what they tell me? They say, well, we did our duty. We did what we were supposed to do. So don't, honestly, the naivety of Dr. John Goffman seriously pisses me off. Anyways, I'm going to get back to this. It is very important for citizens to get involved as directly as possible in these major environmental issues. For long ago, the public has been excluded from any significant participation in the dialogue. It has been thoroughly bypassed in considerations of what hazards to life and future will be accepted for specified benefits or ostensible benefits. This must change in the very e early future. It is evident that the public is vitally concerned about preserving an environment habitable by humans and other living beings. Public dismay at the progressive deterioration of the environment with an almost total absence of any constructive action by government to alter this ominous trend is equally evident. Government agencies are often the chief promoters of pollution activity, aided and excused by huge public relations staffs that grind out reams of one-sided in uninformational press releases. The AEC is just one governmental agency which appears to have little regard for public interest. James Turner a consultant with Ralph Nader Center for the Study of Responsive Law describes the incredible situation with respect to food additives thus, quote, Over 95 different ingredients and chemicals can be added to bread by the manufacturer as he desires without adding them to the label. There are 76 such ingredients in soft drinks. There are 33 in cheese. In fact, the whole standard setting procedures of the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Agriculture are irrational and do not reflect the best interests of the consuming public. Unquote. That's September 1970 from the San Francisco Sunday Examiner and Chronicle. Michael Wallen Controlling, from controlling the potential hazards of governmental sponsored technology, George Washington Law Review, Volume 36, Number 5, pages 1105 through 1137, July 1968, pointed out that an analogous situation exists in several other governmental regulation agencies, including National Science Foundation with respect to weather modification projects, the Federal Aviation Administration with respect to the SST project, and the Public Health Service with respect to fluoridation. Well, he bumps them all. I think I'm going to stop. I'm at 13 minutes, you guys. Um, put your courage feet on. We need it. Since 1970, we've been super screwed, and these people have been softballing it. And I don't think we're going to stop them. They're obviously, they don't care. But if we power ourselves with information, actively engage. We have to figure out ways to actively engage the people who make the decisions and inform them. I think that's what John Goffman's message is. We cannot assume, number three agreement, Make do not make assumptions, we cannot assume our elected officials understand the danger of nuclear energy. So it's up to us to stop. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Uh, I will make an effort to do another video tomorrow night. And you can call into the radio show tomorrow. What's the number? Let me see. I wrote it on this room. 718-717-8296. It's call in Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
uh, on usuy.tv, and we'll talk with you soon. Ciao.